In 73 days, Donald Trump will be back in the White House. And the Israeli-Palestinian peace plan advanced by him during his first tenure will be on the table. This is according to the president-elect's former senior aide. The 2020 peace plan envisioned Israel controlling a unified Jerusalem as its capital and not required it to uproot any of its settlements in the West Bank. This while granting the Palestinians $50 billion in international investment to build a semi-contiguous state on the remaining territory. Trump had called the plan a win-win for both sides, but it was swiftly rejected by the Palestinian Authority, while Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed the plan with reservations. In an interview with CNN, Brian Hook, who served as Trump's special envoy for Iran, responded to an assertion by Saudi Arabia's foreign minister that normalization with Israel is out of question without the establishment of a Palestinian state. Highlighting the peace plan, Hook said much of that work is still relevant today. He reasoned that the proposal contained all of the conditions that Riyadh is seeking in order to normalize ties with Israel. However, Hook acknowledged that no one is in much of a mood to discuss a two-state solution following Hamas's October 7th onslaught. He claimed that the Israelis at present are focused on keeping them safe from what he referred to as evil terrorism. Hook did not comment on Russia-Ukraine war, but Trump has claimed that he would end in a day through a negotiation deal. He has not elaborated on what he thinks either side should give up, and the president-elect wants the U.S. to disentangle itself from the conflict, given the tens of billions of dollars spent supporting Ukraine against Russia. And to get us some perspective, we are being joined by Dr. Walker Stanzel, former German ambassador to China and Japan. He joins us live from Berlin. Welcome to the broadcast, Mr. Stanzel. Invitation. You're joining us from Berlin. Let's first talk about Europe. While European leaders have congratulated Trump on his election victory, France's message has come with caution that it is time Europe prepares to defend its interests in the wake of the new administration. Do you agree? If you watch how the first presidency of Donald Trump went along and what it did and did not for us Europeans, I think indeed it is high time that Europe prepares for the second um, uh, Trump presidency and uh, President Macron's uh, ideas here, I think, are very welcome. Also, when it comes to the Ukraine-Russia war, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was one of the first to congratulate Donald Trump. He spoke about a victory plan. How optimistic are you about this victory plan being the same as Donald Trump's, given he's saying that he can solve the war in the span of 24 hours? I assume that Donald Trump hadn't heard about the victory plan's uh, contents before, so he must have been somewhat surprised and unprepared to discuss it in comparison to uh, what he is, himself is planning. Now, he has said, as you have quoted him, that he would uh, finish the war in Ukraine within a day, uh, like other uh, wars uh, as well, uh, but in which way he has not told us so far. Right. If I could quickly uh, quote a report by Reuters, this came out in June, sir, and it said it was actually quoting two top advisors to Donald Trump. They, are, they were talking about a proposed plan that would seize military aid to Ukraine unless it agrees to hold peace negotiations with Russia. Yes, and there are other uh, authors. Uh, uh, scholars who have proposed similar ideas in the past uh, without any um, uh, signal that uh, Zelensky or other countries who supported Ukraine uh, think this is a sensible idea. Uh, so far, Russia has never accepted any notion on how to uh, come to peace except if uh, um, Ukraine and the supporters of Ukraine um, accept the Russian original idea how to come to peace, which is, if you translate it into um, reality, would be uh, the same as uh, surrendering. Right, but in the last, given that in the last 24 hours, Kremlin has already said that it is ready to hold talks with Washington, and the Ukraine president has said that he wants to speak, uh, he wants to talk about the victory plan with Donald Trump. Don't you think Donald Trump could actually create a table where both come together? 
Uh, let's see. First of all, uh, Donald Trump will have to listen to uh, Zelensky's idea with his uh, peace plan, and then he will uh, talk with his advisors about it and come to a judgment, and then maybe he will approach Putin. Now, as far as Putin's concerned, he has said many times that he's ready to talk, uh, ready to come to the negotiating table if Ukraine first accepts uh, what is the um, precondition uh, set by Putin himself many, many times, and his spokesmen have said it also. Uh, Russian scholars have put it in writing. Uh, there is a large, large gap between what we know about uh, Zelensky's uh, peace plan, and you know it too, of course, uh, which is very far away from uh, surrendering, which means that um, Russia would have to return the parts of Ukraine it has occupied now and conquered so far. Uh, while um, Ukraine would be ready to negotiate those territories Russia has occupied early on, meaning mainly the Crimean uh, Peninsula. Yeah. Uh, there is a very wide gap between the ideas of both sides. Another point, of course, is uh, NATO membership and presumably also EU membership for Ukraine. This is for Ukraine. Uh, a demand on which they think their survival depends on. And one can understand that. Because had NATO in 2008 agreed to the notion of uh, Ukraine uh, joining NATO, presumably there would have not been the attack of February of 2022 uh, by Russia against Ukraine. So uh, Ukraine has learned that it needs partners who are reliable. And that is why it needs, it feels it needs to uh, join NATO. Uh, this, of course, is a no-go for Putin. No, uh, Trump indeed has a long way to go to bring the two together to one table. All right, let's talk about the other peace plan for Israel's conflict with the Palestinians. We are also hearing that it will be likely back on the table once Donald Trump returns to the White House. That will happen only in January. Your thoughts? Well, uh, see, uh, in the past, um, the present government in uh, Israel has always refused the two-state solution, a solution which in the early 1990s, 1992, was on the table in Oslo, and to which at that time uh, the Israeli government had agreed. But then uh, there came, uh, there came uh, problems in the negotiations with the Palestinians, and we had a new intifada, beginning and it all went to nothing. So now we have both sides, both the, Palest the Palestinians and the Israelis, very skeptical about this two-state solution. But everybody knows at the same time, without giving the Palestinians their own state and without the Israelis accepting that uh, Palestinians will have a sovereign state on the territory of what is now the West Bank and probably also Gaza. Without that, there will be no peace. So again, it's a tall order for uh, for Donald Trump to convince both parties, the Palestinians and the uh, Israelis, that they must make a sensible step towards a two-state uh, solution. And of course, uh, the Palestinians will only agree to such a uh, solution if they can be sure that there will be a guaranteed a sovereign, to be a sovereign state. And Israel will only agree to it if it can be fairly safe that it is security will not be compromised by a Palestinian state, where maybe many people say they want a Palestinian state, as they say nowadays, from the river to the sea, from the Jordan River all the way to the Mediterranean, which would mean annihilation of Israel. So again, there is a long way to go for both sides. What I think is encouraging is that um, the Arab countries, Saudi Arabia, for example, have not refused outright what uh, Donald Trump has said and proposed, but that they are ready to bring some reason into the negotiations. That is very important, I think. All right, Dr. Stanzel, thank you so much for all those insights. Good to speak to you. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the Vyond app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.